Hi, welcome back to the shed for episode 12 of the Jurg's Cup build. And in this episode, we're going to move back onto the neck, fit the tuners and get some frets knocked in. Okay, so we've got a lot of the work done on the body and that is pretty close to finishing actually. There's just one or two little jobs to complete. So before we do that, I want to crack back on with the neck and get that a lot closer because one of the things we have to do is set out the bridge position and kind of get everything centralized on that. So to do that effectively, I need to be able to attach the neck and preferably put some strings on to space everything out. So to that end, I'm gonna fit some tuners and that will require that we thin this headstock down a bit, get it shaped and get the holes drilled, etc. Now, I've marked out where the tuners are gonna go and the first thing I'm gonna actually do is drill the holes out for these, both in terms of the tuners and the bushings. I've got everything set up on the drill press ready to go. First off, I'm gonna drill some seven mil holes right the way through and I've got the drill press set up so that the brad point of the bit is just gonna poke through the front face of here, even though this isn't the finished front face just yet. From there, I'm gonna go through with a nine mil bit and just counter bore those down to that depth that I've got marked on the side of the headstock there. So that when we eventually trim this section of the headstock away, that will leave us a nice clean hole for the bushings to go into. From there, we'll get the headstock down to thickness and we'll just get this transition sanded in but that's for a little way down the line So there's the holes drilled. So now it's a case of thicknessing this down to the 14 mil or thereabouts that we need. And to do that, I've knocked up a little jig and it's simply my big router base with some chunks of wood, super glued and masking tape to it so that that can run over the top of there. And I can use that to trim everything down to the depth that we need. I'm thinking looking at this We'll start our transition about there. So effectively, I need to just route away everything down to the depth that we need, which I am gonna say is 14 millimeters. However, I think my bench is a little bit too bumpy for this operation. So I'm gonna put a sheet of MDF and clamp that down to the table and then clamp the neck onto that to keep everything nice and secure. And we can just get this routed down to the thickness that we want. Okay, so that's set up. I'm gonna start just nibbling some of that material out of the way first, and then I'll drop this down in stages until we get to the correct depth. I've checked it and set my little depth gauge up. I need 28 mil of cutter protruding from the base of here to get to the right depth. So get my ear defenders on and start to get this trimmed down.
okay and I think that has worked absolutely splendidly very happy with that let's tuck that down to thickness really nicely you have to remember not to press on when you're doing that because that perspex is relatively thin so it will deflect if you're not careful and go deeper than you need to but on the whole that is very nice and there's just a little bit of sanding to get that to exactly how we need it so next up we'll get it onto the spindle sander and we'll sand in this transition from the top of the fretboard to the headstock but all in all very happy with how that's gone Okay, and again, I've got another jig set up to hold the neck square and straight to the sander. I've got the closest bobbin on to my neck template, and that gives me a very close fit, so that's all good. So I'll just work my way through and very gently sand this down until we get the desired shape. Hopefully you can see there, that's done an absolutely amazing job of that. Very happy with it, thinking that might be one of the best of those I've ever done. So just a little bit of finish sanding to do on that now, but all in all, very happy with that result. You might have noticed that there was quite a lot of mess and dust there. The vacuum I use for extraction is on another job and not in the shed at the moment. Okay, so that's all the holes drilled, ready to go now with the install of these tuners and it is quite straightforward. It's just a case of drilling seven holes out, putting in seven screws and we're good to go. So I've got my drill bit with a, a little tape flag on. You don't want to drill through and just start one end. And I always do these against the straight edge. And as always, a bit of wax onto the screw threads. And it's my preference to start one end and just work my way through. Okay, and there we have the tuners all fitted. I'm not going to put the bushings in because they're a pain to get in and out and you just end up enlarging the holes, which makes things more difficult when it comes time to finally build the guitar up. So I'm very happy with the way that that's gone. I think they look great and they all line up nicely on the back.
Okay, so with that done, we can now take them all back off again because I've just made a snap decision. If we're gonna be working on the neck, we might as well get some frets banged in, eh? And just to mix things up a little bit, I'm not actually gonna get the fret press out for this one. I'm gonna go old school with it. Just felt like a bit of a change. So I'm still gonna put a little dab of glue into that fret slot. But then I'm just going to bang these frets in with the mallet. And with the fender roots of this guitar in mind, I'm not even going to nip the tangs on these. I'm just going to bosh them in and then we can trim it down accordingly once the glue's dried. And of course, as is always the case, I'm just going to open that fret slot out a little bit with the triangular file first. I did do it on that one. I just didn't film it. Let's move on to the next one. Now these frets are a little bit smaller than the, the jumbos that I generally use, kind of in reverence to the vintage style of this guitar. So these are a little bit over two mil wide. Whereas I'd normally go for something kind of more three mil. So I'm just going to carry on, work my way down the board. and I'll catch up with you when they're done.
and now I get a chance to try out a new tool that I've bought and all it is it's a block of wood and it's got two sections of file laid into it one at a 90 degree angle and one at another angle I don't know what that is probably about 30 degrees ish and this is for flushing off your fret ends so you flush them off square to the board first and then you put a slight chamfer on with this file it's not expensive i got it off amazon i think it was about 15 quid ish had it a little while just haven't had a chance to use it yet And you know what all in all that worked quite well it's a little bit rougher than i would have liked but it does the job and it leaves you with nicely flushed off and chamfered fret ends obviously they're going to need a little bit more work before they're acceptable but for now spot on okay so there's the frets in and i think that's gone very very well really happy with it fretboard looks nice i'd be very intrigued to see what this looks like with some oil on it but i think as things stand it looks good i'll bring you in closer onto this 12th fret position which if you remembered we repaired by inlaying a veneer into it and i don't think anyone who didn't know would ever guess that that had been repaired it looks really really good so happy with that and you can't really see from the top either so there's a few things we need to do yet we need to put some dot markers on the top and obviously we need to carve the neck because it's still flat on the back but apart from that we've made some pretty solid progress in this episode to the point where we can now offer this up to the body get it screwed on and start setting out for the bridge etc but that's going to be for next time i'm going to leave this one here so as always don't forget to hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already done so and i'll look forward to seeing you next time Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.